What's going on guys? So I am back at one of my favorite reptile rooms to go and check out and visit with and explore. Right behind this door, again, is one of the coolest monitor reptile rooms in the world. I'm here again at Mike's Monitors a year after I made the original video, and we're gonna go in and we're gonna check out to see what's new and exciting right here at Mike's Monitors. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. All right, so uh, I, I was gonna go in and, um, but look at this door. This door is, I don't know why, like, look at this. I'm stand. I, I gotta go like this to get in here. Oop, I just crashed into something. Okay, we're in. All right, look at this. This is so nice to be back in, seriously, my favorite reptile room, but certainly my very favorite monitor room. Mike, this is always a treat to come over here and revisit what we once saw. And uh, what's new? What's happening around uh, here? Well, what's new is, well, nothing's new here. Um, the Mertens are still yep, doing great away. over there. We got a coming eye here. Yes. And this was one of the ones that I remember very vividly from last time. Yep. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous lizard. That's my big male lemon head. He is gorgeous. So now you uh, put oak leaves in here. That's actually kind of cool. Yeah, uh, oak leaves, uh, they kind of su serve two purposes. What they do is uh, it's a good opportunity for them to forage. Sure. Look for food down there. And it gives them some uh, stimulation. And it also locks the moisture into the uh, dirt. So it's, it's like having a, a cover over your dirt so it doesn't dry out really fast. Very so, good usage of oak leaves. Absolutely. And I get them for free. Everybody does. I, you know, so uh, free is the best kind of anything. Yeah. All right. So, and then we got another coming eye over here yes. that I remember seeing. Um, yeah, where is she? She's back there. So this is going to be perfect. I'll she's way up. Her. I don't see oh, her. Oh, she's behind yeah, there. Yeah, she's, she's behind the cork. I can see her you if can, I stand right she's here. She's right there. All right, hang on. <laughs> let's go over here. Or you can oh, there we go. Right There's there. a little. Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna get her out of there anyway. So let's well, well, step over here. Do, what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna open the gate. All right. And this is the pass-through gate. I use this to cut the male out when she's nesting. Uh, so we open the gate. Oh, so you don't need to physically take them out. No. I don't remember if I saw this last time. Yes. Is this new? No, no, this has been here. That's been there, okay. And now he's going and he smells her and she's ready. So it shouldn't be but a few minutes before they're locked up. All right. Go get her, Romeo. Go get her, Romeo. Yeah, he will. All right, well, we're going to let yeah. these two lovebirds get acquainted over here. What else is new and exciting around here? Uh, okay, well, this is my swan song, coup de gras, whatever you want to say. This is like my masterpiece. So. Coup de gras is much more fun to say. Okay. And this is my Varana Simulus enclosure. And as you can see, I've zoopoxied all the walls. Look at this. And like everything is, you know, connected real well. Everything's fixed in place. I got a, a running water feature with filtered heated water. I got a heat pad against the back there to heat the soil for uh, you know, possible nesting there. And then I also created this uh, arboreal termite mound. Look at that. You and, created that. Yep. And that's actually, uh, it's a, what they call a quarter turn bucket. So you don't have to keep spinning it around. Uh, quarter turn and it's sealed. And if you can see this, watch this great little feature here. So there's the quarter turn. There's my nest box. And as you can see, I got a heat pad that keeps this uh, between 90 and 82 degrees, so they can choose where they want to lay their eggs. That's ingenious. Hey, thank you. And, and, then, and I would expect nothing less than something this awesome over here from you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it's, you know, something I've always wanted to do. Look at that, that is absolutely ingenious. This is exactly why I love coming over here. Yep. And you know, we're gonna do this every year. Sounds every great. year Sounds I'm coming great. back well, to do a follow-up because I, there's something awesome over here every time I'm I'm actually here. annexing 
um, the next room because the sulfurs are going to be quite big. So I'm building two more walk-in enclosures over there that'll have my big sulfurs and my snakes. There so, will be a follow-up to this follow-up. I cannot wait. All right, now for the coup de gras. Yep. If this enclosure wasn't the coup de gras. Yep. That guy up there. Yep, that's Varanus similis. That's a spotted tree monitor. They come from uh, New Guinea or northern uh, Australia. Uh, they could be found in both. I'm sure these come from New Guinea because nothing's coming out of Right, right, right. I was going to say. And yeah, they're just, man, they're little bulldog lizards. That's my favorite species. Uh, they're just a small animal and they, they have such a huge attitude and presence and they're very they could be very aggressive and they bite hard worst bite i ever got from any monitor snake anything one of these guys right here all right bill will you demonstrate handling yeah you ready to see yeah, this let's do it yeah, all you right you don't really got to handle all you gotta do is put your finger there I'm not even gonna gonna try. i don't want to get bit by crested geckos i'm not yeah. gonna try and get bit i was calling them goth ackies goth they, they like, are goth <laughs> ackies that's exactly what they are might be able to get in there those are total Gothakis. Yep. That sounds like Klingon, doesn't it? Gothaki. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get bit by one of those. Or I something on a Game of Thrones. Rusty. It's Dothaki. Don't want to get bit. All right, by but one. we got to see them, so come on out here. Come on okay, out here and bite my finger. You, you, oh, there we go. There's a little there sneak go. peek in the hole. Not a very good sneak peek. Yeah, they're very shy. Look at that dude. Gothaki. <laughs> Because they're a similar size, they kind yeah. of have the similar body shape. Yeah. A little more sassy. And Gothaki is a oh, lot of fun man. to say. That is so sticking there. He is there. He is. Look at that. Oh man, beautiful. That is a total Gothaki. <laughs> Look at that attitude, man. Now you know why I love him so much. He's just like he thinks he's six feet right now. Yeah, he does. He, he that's the male. He's not worried about nothing. Okay, so Game of Thrones, huge fan. The Dothraki, these are Gothaki, but what was the name of Aquaman's character as a Dothraki? I cannot remember. I never saw Game of Thrones. <gasps> ever. I have not watched one episode. I Mike, will have you? see myself out. <laughs> All right, that's it. End of the video. I, no, I cannot I work Google with that. these men Those anymore. I cannot film these guys anymore. How do you not watch Game of Thrones? I Okay, so comment below. A... Have you guys watched Game of Thrones and was it as awesome except the, you know, final episode? But what was the name of Jason Momoa's character as a Dothraki? Comment below cuz I can't remember it. All right. So, we're going to we're going to see a couple more cages and then we are going to watch Game of Thrones from beginning to end and we will be here until next uh, October. Can we order a pizza? We can order several pizzas. That sounds good. I'm down. All right. Here's uh something that I don't think you saw before. My, uh, oh yeah, Milky Milk Frogs. That is cool. And again, everything in there is created with Zupoxy and my imagination. Wow. You really have a good imagination. Thank you. And then, like, here, let me show you this little feature here. All my filtration and everything's down here, out of the way. You don't see nothing. It looks like a little river. That's fantastic. Yeah. That is just fantastic. Those are two happy milk frogs. Yes, they are. Me and Bill, uh, what was it, a couple of months ago, we were pulling eggs out of here. Yeah. It was thousands of eggs. eggs. So, milk frogs, I don't know if they're prolific, but every milk frog pairing that I've ever had, tons and tons of tadpoles. I don't know what to do with them. I, I, I know for humans, the Viagra works. But uh, I, I got a uh, iron deficiency, but I wanted to get some Viagra. So the doctor gave me uh, like an iron supplement mm, mm. along with the Viagra. But every time I get a <laughs> now, I turn to the north. So. <laughs> <laughs> what were we down here to do? Oh, we're oh, looking yeah. at monitors. Okay, so here, this is, um, this is a banded sulfur water monitor from Java. And she... Uh, She's stained. Her skin's a little stained right now, but she is super clean, banded. Almost looks like a Spencer eye. So, this is a female. This is a female. And you got 26 eggs in the incubator right now as we speak. Absolutely. And where are we with incubation? Are they going to hatch uh, today while I'm here with the camera? or maybe, I, I may have some Mertens hatching, but the, the, 
The sulfurs will hatch in November. November. Yeah. All right. Like with most sulfurs, these are, you know, this might be three years out of the wild, tame as a cat. They, matter of fact, they love me. I don't know why, but they love me. So she'll come out, coming out. Come on, come on. Is that the one we were playing with when? That's we the male. We'll do oh, the same yeah, in a yeah, minute yeah. here. It's okay, girl. Look at that. Come on. Well, this is also a testament to the investment that Mike has. In yeah, for sure. I mean, that is some serious trust. Yeah. Yeah, look at that belly on her. She's ready. I'm going to introduce the male in a minute here. And we'll be able to get some uh, copulation videos of uh, sulfur monitors. Wow. Yep. Yeah, with or without the Viagra? With, no, without. So without, far, without. He's a young male. He don't need it like me. All right, all right. Well, you know, again. That's, that's funny, because I, when I did take one of those, I, I didn't have water with me. It got stuck in my throat. I had a stiff neck. So uh, here's my new hatchling rack. Uh, is that where you want to go? I don't know where I want to go. Okay, so... When I got rid of all my old datrias, remember this I remember was, this, yes. This was your uh, uh, Kimberly's over yeah. here, your Odatras over yeah. Kimberly's, I think, were over here. No, Kimberly's were oh, there. Oh, they were there. Kilgaras right. were there. Kil and, that's and, what was and there, Gil yes. And I were in the corner. Yes, now I remember. So when I got rid of those, I um, used to have that raise up rack here that was small for Odatras. Yep, yep. But now everything that I have is larger species, so I made these for my hatchlings to raise up and sell them, which is really, it's a really great, um, it's a great rack for a couple reasons. Number one, it's easy to feed them, easy to clean, and to socialize them, they'll come right up to you for food, and it's real easy to socialize them. So when I do sell them out there, the people who buy them from me are well ahead of the game as far as socializing. For if they, real, yeah. If they listen to my advice and do what I've been doing, they're, you know, in, in six months' time, they're going to have a big lizard that's like a puppy dog. So that's the purpose of these kids. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, I see up here, let me get around this door. Yeah. All right, so how did you get these uh, green tree monitors to look so much like snakes? <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a trick I'm not going to divulge at this point, but they are very... Uh, Boa-esque. I've never seen green tree monitors like that. Yep, yep. Those are those are unique, unique to the uh, hobby. So those are actually yeah. really amazing. Yeah. I just love those. These are actually emerald tree boas, but look at this one though. It's patternless. Patternless. Yeah. And there's something even more unique about that. Near the rear of the snake, there's a cluster of about 20 or 30 scales that are blue, and there's a white question mark in it. So I call her Riddle. Wow. Like she's like, she reminds me of the Riddler on the old Batman series. For real. 60s. So for those who need a refresher course on emeralds, that is how they normally look with those awesome little white, I, I call icicles. them fangs. Yeah, yeah, fangs, icicles. But that's how they, they, I mean, they look amazing as wild types. But look at this dude over here. That is, that is epic. Thank you. That is epic. Yeah, these are the last of my um, Odatrias. These are the last Gill and I's that I hatched. And these are actually going to the Arizona Desert Museum, uh, Bob Ashley. Yeah. And they're going Saturday. So they'll be on attraction at the Arizona Desert Museum. All right, so moving, excuse us, please. Pardon me. Moving over here. Uh, we've seen this last time. Yep. This is just amazingly awesome. Anybody in? Anybody Nobody's home in there? in there. I used to use that to display my uh, audaciousness that I would bring to the show. Yep, I remember seeing that. Um, and then, wow, you, that is a full incubator. Turn the lights on for you. So, uh, yeah. I have, let's see, what do I got here? I got Mertens. I got Coming Eye. I got Sulfurs. This is one clutch. Um... What else do I got? I got Mertens. These Mertens are getting, I was hoping they'd be hatching when you were here. See them how they're denting? Yeah, they sure they're are. They're ready to go. They've been denting like that for, you know, I don't know, three, four days now. What so, have we got on uh, on Mertens? Like 200 some odd days, right? Yes. Yeah, the, the longest has been like 200, we'll call it 280. 280? 280, the longest. See, I think 60 days for ball pythons is too long to wait, oh, man. I man, just I, couldn't I'm do this. I'm jealous of you guys. No with that. patience for that. So, tucked around here, this is the boy. This is the boy, yes. Now, 
Again, I don't remember if this was finished last time or not. Yes, it was. It That's was. See, my, like, under the cage, uh, under the stair cage, because I don't like to. Lose I think space. my memory may need some Viagra, because ah. yeah. But yeah, so this is the under the stairs cage. So we walk down here, and so this dude knows that you're coming every single time. Yes. That is and awesome. And he's very friendly. He knows when I come to the cage, I either got food, or I'm bringing him to a female. So well. Hey, you know we're what? Gonna, we're going to do that right now. It is now time Cut to it. play the game food or female. What's it going to be? It's female. He knows it because yesterday he got a good feed. Come on. You know where you're going. So, and he's real gentle and friendly and yeah, it seems you know, that way. We uh. We played pass him around like a football with last time Bill was here with all his friends. But watch how fast. All right, so we got the male over here with the female. Oh, look at that young love. Yep. He's like, wait, I want to eat that mouse on yeah, the dude, camera. Dude, wait. there's a girl in swimming oh, in the... Oh, he knows. I can tell the herky jerk's going on already. I don't know, man. If there was a girl in a bathtub in front of me, I wouldn't be looking over in this direction, dude. Eh. I think even he's she's like, "What are you doing?" I think he's got something for you, Dave. What? Look at oh, there's the goes. jerky. That's it. Don't take long. Wow. And they will be together for the next fourteen days. Fourteen days. Yep. That 14 days, that's a very long brown chicken brown cow. Yeah, that's that's it. That's uh, I Last time I bred them, I didn't keep them together for 14 full days. Um, when he lost interest in her one day, I had pulled them, and I pulled them a little too early. She laid an infertile clutch. Oh, boy. So this time I'm I want to guarantee the real deal. Yeah, so. Absolutely. All right. 14 days, buddy. All right, guys, so we got the monitors paired up. We are just going to sit around and wait for them to get cozy. I am still trying to figure out what Jason Momoa's character's name was in Game of Thrones. It's out. I, I don't even know what it is. But while we're waiting for the monitors to get a little cozy, and while you guys are thinking about what Jason Momoa's character's name was in Game of Thrones, we're going to take a little break and we'll be right back. Rainbow Mealworms is not only a proud sponsor of this channel, they are the premier source for all your reptile food needs. They grow all of their quality insects in-house and I use them exclusively for all my insect eating reptiles. So place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net or click the link in the description below. Now that there's some young love over here, yep. let's go see how our coming eye are this doing. I I don't know what the heck is his problem, he's being really kind of... Well, is the few... Oh, no, wait, 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 Nothing's happening over here. Yeah. Is she going to his viv or does he go it, to they her, can go, her They can go they either way. Usually, out. usually okay. he comes right into her because uh, he'll smell her pheromones. <clears throat> and I've guaranteed her cycle by feeding her really, really heavy. And I know she's cycling right now, so as soon as this... So you stimulate them with food as well as temperature or not so much temperature no i i don't temperature sex or light cycle um cycle any of my animals it's all food food yep yeah food cycle so yep. so you feed them x number of food items during the year and then when do you start really beefing them up when well i feed my females all my females i feed heavy all the time um, and they'll go from a normal body shape and, uh, you know, body mass to where they, they'll, they kind of, what I call pair out. So they get real heavy in their rear end and even like after a feed. So, um, when she's all paired out like that, then I know she's in a, a cycle, introduce the male and boom, they do their things. So and that's that. That's it. Oh, you yeah. make it sound easy. Uh, it, it is if you just... Keep them hot and feed them a lot. That's the old adage, you know. Um, kind of sounds cliche, but people want to know, like with you know snakes, there's a there's a recipe, there's a process. Of sure. Cooling off, temperature, warming lights, up, uh, yep, yep. With monitors, if you just run them fast and keep them in a time of plenty, they br they produce for me all year round. So I get maybe four clutches a year out of these guys and them, 
and I'm still trying to work on the uh, Similis, which is a, a, a mystery to most people. But the Gothaki. The Gothaki, and I'm going to crack that code. All right, well, let's see what's happening in here. Oh, he's just, he was just being a little there shy. There he goes. See how long it takes for a herky-jerk. There we go. Over the bridge and through the woods. Oh, look at that young love. Uh, you mind if I uh, come over and for some Netflix and rats? <laughs> I know he's picking up on her pheromones, and he'll check out the whole cage before he goes to her. Unlike this guy here who's uh, more uh, aggressive, these guys have been breeding for years and years, so um, they have their way of doing it. He's in no rush. So we were just uh, talking about that, and I missed it, but she just jumped right in the water. Now, yeah. where do you go? What, so yep. that's a sign that, hey, I'm in the water now. Yep. Let's you know make some waves, yep. so to speak. Yeah, if she wasn't receptive to him, him coming in her cage like that, she would have bolted over here, hidden a log. But she knows, she goes to the magic hot tub where it all happens. So, so her jumping in the water just then is pretty much a sign for him I'm ready. Here yeah. we have a very shy male He's coming out really and we have a female that is about yeah. to get a complex yeah, well, by thinking that the male oh, God, does not want her. Oh, here we go. Here we go. And he's so gentle with her. Yeah, he's gentle with her? Always gentle. Aww. That's so romantic. This line, when I first got it back in the coming eye, I, it took me a long time to find um, wild type coming eye. Yeah. Because there's also a, a phase, I don't know if it's a locale or what it is, but they call it a whiteout. Where the, where the beautiful colors like this, they as they mature, they start to get a, a white. She kind of has that going on a little bit. Well, those are scars. I got her, when I got her, she was in bad shape. But I knew she wasn't a whiteout because the whiteout sure. dissipates throughout the whole body, not just in certain areas. So these were picked for this contrast of color and the white out is just something that i'm not really into all right let's see what's going on in here lock we are locked and loaded all right well i don't know if this is all for science or if this is just an invasion of their privacy but we're going to let them do what they do and mike it is always a pleasure when i'm in wisconsin to come over here and just see all the things that you got going on here, all the updates. You really do have the best monitor room in the world. I appreciate that, man. I really do, because there's a lot of nice ones out there. Uh, I put a lot of heart and soul and, my, you know, a lot of my life into this stuff. I so I appreciate those words. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Guys, seriously, it is always awesome to come over here and see Mike's monitors. There's always something new going on here. His cages are absolutely amazing. There's going to be another follow-up video to this follow-up video probably next year. So anyway, guys, uh, I... I still cannot think of Jason Momoa's character in Game of Thrones, and it's really bothering me. So comment below. Let me know what that character's name is. Oh, it almost came to me. Carl, Carl, wrote. I almost had it, but I don't have it. So comment below and let me know. As soon as I turn off this camera, it's going to pop into my head, but still, let me know what it is, because it might not. Anyway, I'm going to quit rambling, guys. I just want to give a real quick shout out and thank you to all my Patreon supporters. If you would like to become a Patreon supporter, that link is in the description below. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. And until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.